All right, this is information about the comparative study so that you guys can be prepared and know exactly what is expected of you by IB and how to complete it in class and outside of class. Um, it is an external assessment task, which means that I help you with it and I predict a grade for you, but it is graded by an examiner who goes through your screens, which are your slides, and looks at it and gives you a grade according to the rubric. So you are going to analyze and compare artworks from different cultural contexts. Um, the component is submitted as a PDF. It is um, determined number of screens, 10 to 15 screens for SL, and it's 20% of your final exam grade. It is not an extended essay, so you can be excited and a little relieved about that. It doesn't even have to be an essay format. You don't have to use complete sentences throughout the whole thing, but you do need to show what you know and use descriptive specialist vocabulary and um, be specific and provide your sources. It is an independent critical and contextual investigation of three or more artworks. I recommend just choosing three from differing cultural contexts. It is an investigation that strikes a balance between visual and written content, which means you can make it pretty, you can put your artwork in it and your own um, spin on it, but it does need to be very clear. Um, you're graded on your presentation, um, visual presentation and display, as well as your, um, your whole overall content. It is going to be submitted as a PDF. You can use Google Slides, you can use PowerPoint, you can make the screens in Photoshop and save them as a PDF and put them in Adobe um, Acrobat and combine them into a PDF. You can use something that you have on an iPad that you prefer to use if you would like, but you do need to save the final draft as a PDF with 10 to 15 screens for SL. So. 10 to 15 screens, exactly. It has to be 10, it has to be less than 15. So um, on those screens, you are going to examine and compare at least three artworks by at least two different artists. I recommend two artists, three artworks. So one artwork by one artist and two artworks by another artist. Make it simple as possible. Um, you could choose three artists if you want, but that makes it a little bit harder to get in all of your critical and contextual analysis. So if you are in HL, you also add, at the end, you add three to five extra screens. They have to be extra screens after the 10 to 15, which analyze the extent to which your own work has been influenced by the art and artist that you examined. So you should have images of your own work and compare those to the artist that you studied. The next criteria, you have to have your artist from contrasting context. So they have to be local, national, international, or intercultural different contexts. So it'd be nice if you could go see one of them at a museum in DC. So try to pick something that you could actually go visit firsthand. That's called a primary source. Um, but you do want your artists to be from different backgrounds ideally different areas of the world and different eras in history and different art movements. You need to acknowledge all image and written sources and you will also turn in a works cited document. So you're going to turn in a Word document and you're going to turn in a PDF of all your screens. So you'll have in-text citations and you'll have citations at the end for all images and all sources that you have gained knowledge from. So this is how it's assessed. There are um, five criteria for SL and there are six criteria for HL. You can see how much each one weighs. It's six points for each of the first five criteria, formal qualities, function and purpose, cultural significance, comparisons and connections, presentation, and subject specific language. And if you're in HL, those three to five extra screens are worth up to 12 points and that is making connections to your own art. So this is what it means. Formal analysis is the visual analysis part. So we're going to talk about elements, principles, composition, um, colors, line, shape, form, texture, value, shape, all of those things that you know. So it's how it looks, um, all the visuals and the comparisons between the two visual comparisons of the artworks. Those are the formal qualities. Contextual qualities um, 
are the other categories, function and purpose and cultural significance. So there are two parts. Function and purpose um, has to do with the meaning behind the work, why it was created. Um, sometimes it's very obvious and sometimes it is um, less obvious. This is really based on your research. So you are demonstrating on this screen that you have done a lot of research onto this artwork and that you have a lot of context behind the work. So you have learned information about this work so that if you were able to stand up in a gallery and present this work and teach other people about this work, you would have an informed context. You would be able to describe exactly what was going on at the time and history and where this was made and what was going on in the artist's life and what the artist intended and what the meaning is and what the symbolism is and what the imagery is about. All of those things that we work on. The cultural significance is similar to that, but it is more specifically related to um, easy cultural contexts such as history, times in history. Is it after World War I? Uh, geography, is it from Japan? Is it from Mexico? Is it from the USA? Um, does it have religious ties? Is it Islamic art? Is it Christian art? Is it early Byzantine Christian art? What other relative context that you could have? So you would be giving some background information on that. Um, the art movements associated with it, what was going on in history, and how that is relevant to the actual works on those slides. So a little bit less about meaning and a little bit more about the background and the context of what was happening in that time and how it's viewed in that time and place. Um, on the next couple of slides, you're going to make comparisons and connections. You can use a lot of visual charts and graphs and even your own drawings to show this. Um, you can zoom in on little areas and highlight connections between similarities and differences. Um, you might want to make um, comparisons between just two works and then maybe the third on the side, um, but you need to present all three works. Then you get a whole nother grade for your presentation um, and is it, can you read it? Is it legible? Is it engaging? Is it exciting to look at? Is it strongly visually presented? Which means it's got great sense of design. It's not overly crowded. It's not hard to read. It's not overly complicated. Um, it doesn't hurt your eyes to look at the screens. Um, do you have your sources cited? Do you have your images referenced correctly? You need to be consistent. You need to choose MLA or APA and you need to use it throughout. Um, do you, is your vocabulary strong? Are you using it correctly? Are you using the word form to talk about form descriptively? Are you using the word color to talk about color in a way that makes sense and is correct and you're not talking about complementary colors that are not actually complementary colors? That sort of thing. The last one is the connection to your own artwork. That should be really meaningful and personal and how it impacts you. Um, that part should be really fun. I'm sad for the SL people that that's not actually going to be in your slides, but it should be in your um, journal. You should be working on it in your process journal. So you're going to consider your selection of two artworks. Here's an example. We've studied several artworks that have several very similar compositions. This is clearly a portrait from the side, um, a profile, almost three quarters, but almost profile of a young woman that is cropped in a very similar way as a composition that fills the space in a very similar way. One is done in 1998 by Chris Ulfilly, and one is done in 1475 to 1480 by Sandro Botticelli in Italy. So they're very different. Um, they have different contexts. They have different narratives. Chris Ophilly is, his, has a lot to do with the uh, African-American movements and the U.S. And Sandro Botticelli is in a period where they are um, in the Renaissance period where they are very um, enticed by the classical beauty and the ideal f human form. And then we have the obvious comparisons of the racial tension between um, these two ideal classic forms and the reference to Bob Marley with No Woman No Cry. So we have also we have both form and meaning. So here are two um, two paintings or two artworks that are done based off of cans. 
Um, Ai Weiwei is Chinese. He was actually banned, um, exiled from China, um, and not allowed to come back because they did not like his artwork. So you should study that. It's quite interesting. Um, he did these very detailed painted China soda cans or beer cans that have been crushed and it's called weekend with very traditional um, artistry uh, details on them in a traditional style but kind of commenting on the context of China in the you know past decade. Um, Jasper Johns is American and these are painted bronze cast ale cans so beer cans again 1960. Um, so we could talk a lot about the 60s and what was happening in America in the 60s and around, you know, Vietnam War time and protests and the Beatles and all kinds of exciting things happening and a little bit of a rebellious protest culture. Um, and art was also having a pop art movement. So you could compare those two things. Formally, these are both cans. They're both sculptures. They both have multiple objects included in the sculpture. Um, the color palette is very simple in both of them. So conceptually as all the things that I talked about with the beer cans and what was going on at the time. So you're going to start with something that excites you. This is one of the earliest known works of art, which is what is exciting about it. It's Venus of Willendorf. You will study it in your art history classes in college and your survey of Western art. If you take this 24,000 to 22,000 BCE. That's a long time ago. Um, so start with something that you like. It can use, you can use this as a chance to actually delve into what's important to you as an artist, an artist that you really connect with because you are the one that chooses the artist, not your teacher. And it has to be independent choice. So make it an important one, make it an informed one, make it something that you like. So then you're going to find other works to compare to that. You're going to reflect on um, what it is that interests you about the works in the way that you compare them. So are you interested in the fact that the Venus de Willendorf has the representation of the female body through different media? So you could try a painting by Jenny Seville or a photograph by Irving Penn. Um, so Irving Penn very um, obviously covered Venus of Willendorf, Jenny Seville is not um, directly referencing it, but it's cropped in a similar way, and um, it shows the form in a similar shape. Or are you interested in issues and thematic ties? Um, or is it about maternity and childbirth? So you could look at artists that have done work about maternity and childbirth from different cultures and times. Louise Bourgeois um, in 1941, this is a print or limestone statuette from the Hellenistic period, so very early. Here's some sources to look for. Um, I highly recommend the Metropolitan Museum of Art and Art 21. Really start there, see if you can come up with something to compare. Art 21 is going to be the contemporary artists that have a lot of information that's easy to find out about them. It's great research. Um, don't make it harder than it has to be. If you find someone you really like that is obscure and you can't find anything, it's not worth wasting your time. Don't waste your time. So try to find somebody that is easy to research. Make your life easier. Um, if you find somebody in the meanwhile that's not easy to research, keep them in the back of your mind and start working on them in your journal. So we're going to select some artworks. So you're going to find something that has personal significance. You're going to relate to it in some way, like your style is similar. Um, they paint, you paint. They use imagery of wounded animals, and so do you. Uh, they hold your interest. So something that you actually feel like working on, because this is a project that is required, that is 20% of your grade. Study something that actually holds your interest enough that you actually really are curious and would like to learn more about it. Um, can you research it? In four solid places, I need a museum website. It'd be great if the artist had a website or if the foundation for the artist, if they've passed away, has a website. Um, I need books. I need articles. I need references that you can find, even if you find them on the internet, that are from books and articles. If you find a great reference in a blog that's not a very fancy blog, find out where they got their information and go find that place. Um, look on YouTube and Vimeo and see if you can find documentaries or lectures you can watch about the artwork and use that to inform it. If it is in a museum in DC, please go see it. Please go see it. 
take a picture of it if you can, get the information the museum has about it, look on their website. If it doesn't meet those guidelines, save it, use it in your process portfolio. It is valuable to you in your artwork, but may not be valuable to you in your artwork in the comparative study. So find something with solid sources, find something that has context, function, or purpose. If it doesn't have obvious context, function, or purpose, you're gonna have a hard time and you don't need to make this any harder. So um, just go ahead and find something that you can have good sources for. Um, so first you're going to do a visual analysis. We have already learned about visual analysis. It's not much harder than what we've already done. So these two obviously have very formal similarities. We have a figure with a circular object blocking their face. And then we could talk about what strong visual comparisons we have and what differences we have. They're made in different media. They both have a circle in front of their face or a shape. One is a shape and one is a form. One is 2D and one is 3D. One is a screen print and one is a painting. But talk about the use of space and how the shoulders are print, uh, presented forward and all of that. This is the visual analysis uh, graph that I gave you guys. So the formal elements are the elements, principles, and composition, as well as the media. So those are gonna be the first thing that you look at for the comparisons. Then you'll move on to function and purpose and cultural context. We're going to talk about those. When we researched Goya and Francis Stark, we had a Spanish artist from 1799 and an American artist from 2008. They are done in different media. One is a print and one is a mixed media collage on paper. Um, one is an etching print and one is the, um, the collage on paper. Uh, the scale is very different. The collage on paper is actually a lot larger. It's, it's um, several feet tall, but it looks like uh, Francis Stark actually did copy the entire composition and even the shapes and the angle of the chair from this picture, and it says after Goya. But the, what's really interesting about this is the cultural context and the function of purpose, because in American contemporary culture, conceited girls are looked at very differently than they might have been in 1799. So you can talk a lot about how young girls are viewed and also really look up what the, the seat has to do with it. So study that metaphor from the beginning. What did that mean in 1799 and would it mean something different today? Um, also, there's a major difference in this is that you can see the face of the girl in Goya's piece and you cannot see the face in Stark's piece. So what is that all about? That is all function and purpose in cultural context. Cultural context also we would want to learn more about Spanish culture in 1799, what was happening in art and writing and literature and ideas and philosophy and historically then, and also think about what's happening in 2008 and what our life is like now in America and what kind of cultural context that adds to artwork. So you want artists of meaningful connections. Hokusai and Jeff Wall this is another one where Jeff Wall has directly referenced Hokusai in the title. It says after Hokusai. So he has reset this. Um, it's a transparency on a light box, actually, which is really cool um, of a photograph. But it is, um, you know, directly referencing Hokusai. So this should have formal and conceptual com um, comparisons. So form and meaning. Form means it visually looks similar in some ways, and meaning means it has some connection to the meaning. So different cultural contexts again. Hokusai is from Japan in 1832 he made this and Jeff Wall is from Vancouver, Canada and moved to London and studied in London and made this in 1993. So different regions of the world, different eras in art history, different movements in art history. So my role as your teacher, how much can I help? I can help you discuss the, the choice of artworks, but it is supposed to be an independent choice. You need to choose your artworks. I can help you steer you in the right direction, can give you some suggestions, but you are the one that makes the final choice. Um, I can help you get started. I can structure this for you. I can give you lots of resources and information about how you're graded. I can give you one draft advice, but I am not allowed to give you more than that. I cannot edit your draft. I can give you advice on the side. Um, you are going to meet with me and we are going to go over improvements you should make before the final draft. 
and then the final draft that you give me is your final PDF and we upload that PDF to the IB exam. So for us all seniors, I would like the um, comparative study outline due by the end of the second quarter, which is Friday, February 3rd. So I need to know by that time, your two to three artists and your two to th your three works, at least your main two works, you've decided on your main two works. I need to know what the connections are about those works and I need to know why it's important to connect those two artworks. Um, Sunday, February 12th, two weeks later, you are going to turn in your visual analysis and cultural, cultural context for both main artworks. You can do this in your book if you want, you can do this on slides, but you don't have to compare them. You just have to go through each one and solidly research and um, investigate and make pages or slides on each artwork one at a time the two main artworks. By February 26, you're going to put it all together on your Google Slides. You're going to turn in 10 to 15 slides. Um, and it's your first draft. You're going to turn it in to me. I'm going to discuss it with you and have a meeting by Friday, March 3rd. And then you'll just have to do your final draft before March, end of March, because we have to upload it. So by spring break. Okay? HL seniors, you've already done your draft. I need the final draft with all screens completed before I meet with you. So that should include your 10 to 15 plus your three to five about your own artwork with all your images in there, with all of your citations done. You need to meet with me so I can discuss your improvements that you need to make with you. I will not touch your draft until I have met with you and all the screens are there. By February 22nd, I want your final version PDF and your work cited document done and uploaded so that you are only working on your process journal and your exhibit from here on out. So please take all identifiable information out. I don't want your name on it. I don't need an introductory screen that has um, just your name on it or anything like that. Don't use that as one of your screens. All right. And I will give you some more information on specific components of the slides next.